Let's talk about how to deal with excessive sweating, not just in your hands, but your whole body. The medical term for this is called hyperhidrosis. You have the eccrine gland, okay? You have another gland called the apocrine gland, and then you have the third one, which is sebaceous gland, okay? So I'm gonna to attempt to make this very, very simple, okay? Just to really kind of navigate through it in a simple way because there's a bit of complexity. Now, this gland responds with exercise, uh, nervousness, emotional stress, uh, hot weather. And then the apocrine gland um, responds to emotional stress, fear, pain. And the sebaceous gland is a little bit different because it's releasing kind of this little bit of an oil it's called sebum for lubrication. These two glands are releasing salt and other electrolytes. So these two glands are primarily for uh, cooling, okay? So causing this sweating reaction and then the evaporation of the liquid creating a cooling sensation. So these two are really involved with uh, temperature regulation. And it's really the overstimulation of this gland right here, which is responsible for this excess sweating. And it's usually triggered by some stress, usually emotion. And so the body's tolerance of stress, okay, is just lowered. Little things will trigger it. Now you may not feel stressed, but apparently your body has a very low threshold for stress. Now, What's really, really bizarre to me is that the treatment that they do on some of these cases is surgical. It's called a thoracic sympathectomy. Okay, they literally remove part of your sympathetic nervous system. So in Sweden, this is banned because of the side effects. Okay, I mean, removing part of your nervous system is, is a bit invasive. Or they use medications to inhibit uh, these neurotransmitter enzymes, okay? I'm gonna to try to, again, try to keep this real simple. The temperature regulation in your, in your body is in the brain. Uh, you can call it the thermostat, okay? It's like in the hypothalamus. So it's very similar to what I have in my studio right now. I have the controls and there's a little sensor over there that detects a certain temperature of 70 degrees. So anything that goes too high or too low and that mechanism will either kick in or cool it down or raise the temperature. So there's a little sensor or receptor that picks up temperature that's controlling the whole thing. Same thing in the brain. There's a receptor here that picks up temperature and either turns things off or turns things on. So we have this feedback thermostat mechanism going on between your hypothalamus and your skin. Okay. So that's as deep as I'm going to get with that. So these medications work by kind of completing this communication and turning off this mechanism so it doesn't keep going on and on and on. And so surgically, they're removing part of the sympathetic nervous system, but the medications work on both the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So really, they're uh, attempting to kind of balance out this autonomic nervous system, but they do target the autonomic nervous system. So the question is, is there something natural? Is there something herbal that can be done that mimics this without the side effects? Because these medications always have side effects. And the answer is yes, there is, okay? And the very specific uh, phytonutrient that will mimic this medication is called rosmarinic acid, which happens to be in rosemary, and sage, okay? So both of these plants have this phytonutrient that can actually help mimic this medication. Now, the next thing that I found related to this topic is vitamin B1 thymine, okay? There's one side effect from a severe B1 deficiency and that severe B1 deficiency, okay, if you wanna know the name, it's called Wernicke Korsakoff. That is part of beriberi, which is a B1 deficiency. One of the side effects of the syndrome is excessive sweating. And it just so happens, thymine is involved heavily in the autonomic nervous system, okay? It's essential for the autonomic nervous system to work. And if you're deficient in B1, you can have all sorts of problems with the autonomic nervous system, but excessive sweating is one. So anytime you have a problem with the the sympathetic nervous system, which is the flight or fight, or even the, um, the parasympathetic, you wanna use vitamin B1 in sufficient amounts. And as an interesting coincidence, the herb sage is very rich in vitamin B1. 
And vitamin B1, as far as what it does in the brain, is it works on the limbic system, which is intimately involved with your emotions, okay? So it's kind of a relay switch involved in emotion and emotional stress. And the more emotional stress that a person has, the less B1 they're gonna have because you the requirement for B1 goes up when you experience stress. And taking B1 helps to reduce stress, but all you need to know right now, it's involved in the limbic system. So there are two things I'm gonna recommend, okay? Number one, if you have this condition, excessive sweating, okay? Take this either in the form of rosemary or sage, okay, and sufficient B1. I would highly recommend finding a natural B1, not this, the typical synthetic. Whatever it says on the directions, I would take like four times the amount to see if that can help you. All right, I hope I explained this in a very simple way. I didn't want to get too far into the woods. But the next most interesting video you should watch is on vitamin B1. And I put that video up right here. Check it out.